Galileo TV interview series. I am Silvia Romano, Chief International Affairs for Centro Studi Galileo, and I'm here at the 20th European Conference with uh, Mr. Russell Patton, Director nice General you, of uh, EFE. Thank you very much, Mr. Patton, for being here. Pleasure. And um, I wish to ask some questions to you for our audience, especially uh, regarding your experience in EFE and in general experts of the sector, to talk to us about heat pumps, their impact on our sector, and in general, the overview about the Repower EU. Great. Well, thank you, Sylvia, for giving me this chance. Um, and I think when we think about heat pumps, um, we have an expression in English which says, they're the best thing since sliced bread. What do we mean? I mean, they're, they're just fantastic. This product is going to basically decarbonize heating and cooling across Europe. And it actually is slowly but surely, and we hope very quickly, the end of fossil fuel boilers. Mm -hmm. um, heat pumps are this opportunity to massively decarbonize. The problem is, is that we have a huge ambition to bring them into the homes of, mm -hmm. of, of consumers, but also in industries, in schools, in factories. And th there's a problem, how quickly can we develop new heat pumps um, with new technologies. And so we have to come back to the F-gas regulation. As you know, it's currently being um, reviewed for third time. And combined with that is, well, what refrigerant are we going to use in a heat pump? And of course, they use currently HFCs and also natural refrigerants. But there is no perfect solution. And from an EPE perspective and from the market perspective, we think it's more important to be able to speed up the, the rollout of heat pumps, still using HFCs, but also natural, the so-called natural refrigerants, it's a word I should never use, non-fluorinated um, substances. Because the key is to be able to bring them into the market as, quick, as quickly as possible, because we will then get the greatest reduction of CO2, which is really the key to it. And Repower, uh, Repower EU, you've probably heard, is, is I mean, a, a brilliant policy that obviously came out of the war between Russia and Ukraine. On the one hand, to reduce our dependency on, on Russian gas. But equally, it, it, it really focused on the need to roll out heat pumps as quickly as possible. So I think from that perspective, they are the best thing since sliced bread. But you can't just do them overnight. And give you an example, you know, you couldn't use a propane heat pump in France, in Paris, in a big um, block of flats because their own building codes mm -hmm. wouldn't accept it yet. If you ban HFCs, well, what do you do? Then you bring back basically the gas boiler. So it's a vicious circle. And I think in these situations, pragmatism with ambition is the key. Thank you for this overview. Very complete. And I heard you mentioned the Efficast Regulation Review. Yes. And I understand we are now in the trialogues. Yes. So uh, how are they working? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I, I guess I, am, I, I have my own view on trialogues. Um, and to, to do a quick summary of how EU decision making was made is you'd have a first reading, a second reading. And if you couldn't get agreement, you'd have a third reading. And it gave all interested parties a, a real chance to, to be heard and to get their views across. At the end of the day, decision makers will make their, their decisions. They don't, we as industry do not put a gun to their heads. And actually, you know, we want to um, help decision makers make good legislation. For us, that's the key as industry. We need pragmatic, ambitious, but sort of what we say in, in common language, doable, that can easily be implemented and transposed across 27 member states. And now we find ourselves in these so-called trilogues, which basically means closed decision-making between three institutions, mm -hmm. basically the parliament and the member states with the commission there, with no interference of whether it's the NGO community, okay. consumers or industry. We're, we're not part of that decision-making process anymore in the sense of being able to provide information. For me, there's something fundamentally wrong in European democracy and decision-making that, you know, the key parties of concern 
are suddenly cut out. And if you read, for example, the European Parliament's explanation of trilogues, it actually spells out it's to speed up decision-making process without third-party interference. And this is where the, the presidency is in such a rush to get this proposal through, so much so that they're not prepared to think about the details and how this legislation will be enforced or not. And the, the trilogues have this danger where um, decision makers who need good information are not really able to listen to us. So how do we get across? And I think we're not in that lobbying phase. We're in the phase of just trying to provide best possible information to decision makers. At the end of the day, they take it or they, they leave it. And there's a, there's a frustration that, you know, we are bringing really good, valuable information, whether it's the, the granularity of the definitions or whether bans are um, plausible or whether there will be enough HFCs to not only you know, service the equipment that's there, but for the future rollout. We feel like, you know, we're on deaf ears. We're not being heard. And I think that is detrimental to making good legislation which ultimately serves the purpose of decarbonizing and helping consumers. Well, that's one side of the coin. So I thank oh, you very it's, much. It's, it's both sides of the coin, as I would say. I thank but you yes. very much for your opinion and also for your participation in the conference as expert Great. and also for your cooperation. Thank you again. Thank you very happy. much, Sylvia, and good luck with the conference. Thank you. Bye-bye.